a lot of people believe who are vegan believe that choosing to eat plant-based versions of these products means contributing to a larger societal shift away from the idea that animals are sort of commodities for human use. This episode is brought to you by my workshop, Work in Harmony, Spark Team Unity and Ingenuity Through Music. Learn how you and your cohort can coalesce and create together at isoldatea.com slash W-I-H. Hello and welcome to the Creative Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Whether you're writing the first sentence of a book or solving the climate crisis to get people's attention, you need to tell your story creatively. On the show, I interview peak performers who are coming up with those creative stories and solutions. Through creativity, compassion, and collaboration, they're changing the world. I also bring you ideas and techniques to unlock your potential to do the same. And now, let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to the Creative Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg, and here to welcome you to today's Vegan Life Solutions episode. You see those every single Friday. Today I want to explore the fascinating reasons why vegans love to eat vegan versions of meat dishes and desserts like donuts and chocolate. I'm here to talk about it because I want to dive deeply into the philosophy and the psychology behind this phenomenon. But first, Let's talk about why vegans choose to avoid animal products in their diets. Many people become vegan because of ethical, environmental, or health reasons. Ethical vegans believe that it's wrong to exploit and harm animals for human consumption, and they strive to live a cruelty-free lifestyle, and that is probably the primary reason people become vegan. Uh, There are people who would consider themselves vegan who are environmental vegans, and they recognize the detrimental impact that animal agriculture has on the planet, from deforestation and pollution to greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. And the thing about that is, is that that veganism will always include the idea of not using any animal products and being against animal testing and all of that. And all of that sort of lumps in with this big environment that we live in, the biosphere, our our planet Earth. And then there are health-conscious vegans, and they understand that plant-based diets have been linked to numerous health benefits, including a reduced risk of heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. Health-conscious vegans, again, if, if you're plant-based... That's one thing. Uh, if you're giving yourself the the moniker of vegan, the sort of assumption is by people in the vegan community that you are also still against animal testing and you don't use animal products and you don't wear leather or wool, et cetera, et cetera. So, so the, the, the nomenclature gets a little fuzzy, but I want to be talking, the thing that I want to be talking about today is going to lump all of the vegans in with one group. Now, Why do so many vegans choose to eat plant-based versions of meat, dishes, and desserts? I think the answer lies in our sort of psychological relationship with food. Humans are, I guess you could say, creatures of habit. And we, a a lot of times, we crave familiar flavors and textures and, and meat and dairy products from coming from animals are deeply ingrained in many of our cultures and cuisines and people feel like they're missing out on something when they give them up. Vegan versions of these foods can provide comfort and familiarity and they allow people to enjoy the textures and the flavors that they already love without compromising their ethics or health. And that's a big one. Being able to enjoy it without compromising your ethics is huge for me. That's really the the only reason that I eat those kinds of foods. But let's let's go ahead and dive a little deeper into the psychological aspects of why vegans like plant-based versions of these dishes like chocolate, donuts, etc. We're creatures of habit, right? We often associate foods with emotions or memories, and I personally eat by cravings. So that can be challenging, if, especially if you're eating and you have to sort of have a, a regimented schedule. It's very hard for me to do that. So if you are someone who's like me and you eat by cravings, you might associate the smell of, of cookies, like freshly baked cookies, 
You might associate that with childhood memories that are happy. And similarly, people associate certain uh, animal dishes or desserts with those positive experiences or emotions, like a favorite family recipe or a special occasion like Christmas or uh, Passover or one of the other big holidays. And when people move towards a vegan diet, I think they can feel like they're missing out on those positive experiences and and they might crave like I do <laughs> the flavors and textures of foods I used to love but I personally don't crave the meat I've found for myself I crave the accoutrement of meat dishes I crave the barbecue sauce not the actual uh, ribs of a pig or whatever, wherever ribs come from. It's been so long, I don't even remember. I, I like the condiments, if you will, not, not the actual meat. So whatever, whatever's the, the medium for me to get the condiments is what I'm going to enjoy, right? So I, if you crave all of that and you, and you don't want to consume animal products anymore, that's where the plant-based versions of these foods come in, right? They, they can provide a sense of familiarity and a sense of comfort and joy. And you can enjoy those flavors and textures without compromising on, on what you already believe and what you're trying to do. So I, I used to, when I became vegan, for example, I thought for a long time I'd never be able to uh, have donuts again. But that, now that I've discovered vegan donuts, and they are plentiful here in New York City, it was like, boom, I, I could still get those same flavors. And if you if you go to Cloudy Donuts, you can get donuts like Bananas Foster, which was a little slice of heaven for me. And I'm, I'm able to eat those kinds of things. And I don't, I'm not participating in harming any animals or compromising on anything because I'm eating the vegan versions of these foods that I've loved. So keep a little, <laughs> my brain keeping on overall, I think the sort of psychological aspects of why vegans like plant-based versions is it's fascinating, but it also shows how deeply ingrained our relationship with food can be and how important it can be to satisfy those those uh, those cravings while still maintaining our ethical principles. So whether or not you're vegan, I encourage you to sort of try some of the vegan versions of your favorite foods and see how you feel, right? You might you might be surprised. In fact, I have a feeling you will be surprised by how delicious they can be. And if you can get over the whole, oh, I'm eating something, you know, that is not dairy, not meat, therefore it's somehow wrong, and just try it for what it is, I think it, you'll have a better experience, right? You're not trying to go uh, make those substitutions with a resentful, if you do it with a resentful attitude, it's going to be a bad experience. Do it with... I guess beginner's mind, try it for the first time, see what you think, right? Humans on the whole, I think we have a strong, strong attachment to food, especially the food we, we grew up with, right? The food that we're used to eating. So I don't think it's, I, I think it's uncommon for people to feel like, uh, how do I put this? I don't think it's uncommon for people to feel like they're giving up something significant when they switch to a plant-based diet, right? For example, I grew up eating meat and when I went vegan, I personally didn't feel like I was missing out on the taste and texture. I, I missed out on the variety of food. I missed out on being able to have whatever I wanted as opposed to, oh, I miss uh, a hamburger made out of a cow, right? So that was me. But, but other people might feel like they're missing out on the taste or texture of their favorite dishes. And I'll be honest, some meat dishes are hard to replicate without animal products, but that doesn't mean that you should stop trying to replicate them. And more and more people are coming out with, with the, the plant-based, the vegan versions of these dishes. 
that are just incredible. In fact, today I'm about to go have a vegan Reuben with a friend of mine. And that's one of the, of, of all the things, the vegan, the Reuben sandwich, getting a great Reuben sandwich. Again, for when I was vegetarian for a long time, I would go and I'd get the cheese, uh, the sauerkraut, the Russian dressing and rye bread and, and Swiss cheese. And where the cow used to be, I had them put lots of sliced tomatoes. It's a great sandwich. But now you can have essentially vegan corned beef. And I can't help thinking that I want to have other names for this stuff because it is, it's hard for me to go, yes, it's vegan corned beef. Not because it's hard to substitute beef from cows versus beef from plant matter. It's more that I, I, I'd like to have... I ha- I'd like to have that separation, but that that's probably just me because I think a lot of other people f- to to keep with where it's familiar, to know where to go in the store, we keep those names. Uh, but but you know those plant based versions, there are so many vegan products on the market that can replicate the taste, the texture. Even the look of of meat and dairy products, for example, you can have veggie burgers and plant-based sausages, vegan cheese, vegan ice cream, tons of options around for people who want to enjoy the flavors and textures without harming animals or compromising their health or the health of the planet. So personally, I love trying new plant-based versions of my favorite foods, especially if they're made with whole food ingredients. Now, I've tried, uh, I've tried, uh, let's say, vegan again, barbecue beef, vegan mac and cheese, vegan shrimp, and they're amazing, right? I was blown away by how close they were to the real thing, and I felt really good knowing that I wasn't contributing to animal cruelty or environmental degradation. And is it is it great for my health? Probably not great, but certainly better than having eaten the animal. I think. It's important to remember that at the end of the day, everybody's path to veganism is different. Some people go vegan overnight and never look back. I have a friend who's been vegan his whole life. I have uh, other friends who've been vegetarian and uh, then transitioned to vegan. I was a hardcore carnivore for many years until I became a vegetarian when I was 21. And then a few years after that, I went vegan, but it took a while, right? It took my friend, Kristen, my best friend saying to me, Isolde, you do know what they do to dairy cows, don't you? And I went, no, because I'd never thought about it, right? And and that is a huge thing, right? I had never thought about what is what happens to dairy cows when they're done giving milk. But also, frankly, while they're giving milk, that milk is for their babies, the calves, and the calves aren't getting that milk so that the dairy cows can, uh, can so that humans can milk the dairy cows for milk that ends up being for human consumption. Think about that for a minute. The babies who would normally get the cows, their mama's milk, don't get the mama's milk. Why? Because the mama's milk is going to feed humans. There's a such a disconnect there that it just kind of, when I think about it that way, it just blows me away that we would take necessary food from a baby to give to humans who look at how many of us are becoming more and more, we're, we're more and more lactose intolerant. Why do you think that is? Why do you think so many of us are becoming more and more? Because I think we're realizing on, on some global level probably that we shouldn't be eating it. And that's just me. Anyway, let me <laughs> let me get back to my topic at Anne, because boy, when I think about the philosophy and the psychology behind that, it it just it terrifies me and blows me away in, in in a really bad way. But but let me let me let me go back and say, okay, so if you go vegan overnight and you never look back, that's great. But often eating those plant based versions uh, as you're transitioning to a vegan diet, or if you want to reduce your consumption of animal products is a great way to do it. And, you know, you might just discover a new favorite food along the way, right? So whether or not you're vegan, as I said, I'm, I'm encouraging you to see how you feel if you try some of these dishes. Because if you're, well, if you're already a vegan, you can keep exploring and uh, you can see what you can discover, right? You'll, you're going to discover new flavors, new cuisines, new ways of combining the ingredients, and it's going to be fabulous. So let's move on. Another aspect to all of this is that many people choose to become 
vegan because they want to make a positive impact on the world, right? Making a positive impact is a big reason why a lot of people choose to adopt a vegan lifestyle. And again, putting in with that the whole no animal testing, no animal products, etc. But it's a way to reduce your carbon footprint, protect animals from cruelty, promote a sustainable agriculture. And one of the easiest ways to make that impact is through our food choices. By choosing to eat plant-based versions of meat and dairy products, we're supporting the growth of the vegan movement and encouraging companies to develop more plant-based options. Let me tell you, I tried the new vegan Reese's peanut butter cups with oat milk, they're fabulous, right? So more and more we're demanding it. And the more demand there is for these products, the more accessible and affordable they're going to be, right? And that means more people are going to have the opportunity to try these kinds of foods and maybe even make the switch to a vegan lifestyle. And in addition to making a positive in impact on the world, eating plant-based versions of these dishes and desserts can also be a way to connect with others and share the joy of eating vegan. When, when I introduce non-vegan friends and family to delicious plant-based versions of their favorite foods, I get to show them that veganism doesn't have to be about sacrifice or deprivation. And, and the same thing can go for everybody, right? It can be about discovering new flavors and enjoying familiar ones in a more ethical and sustainable way. So if you're a vegan who enjoys plant-based versions of meat dishes and desserts, keep on enjoying them, right? Not only are they great and satisfying and delicious, but they're also sort of contributing to the growth of the vegan movement and making a positive impact on the world. And if you're not vegan yet, again, I encourage you to give it a try and see how it feels. Who knows, right? You, you, you might discover you really like it. But here's another philosophical aspect to this phenomenon, right? It's really interesting. Many vegans see their dietary choice as more than a personal preference. It's because a lot of people believe who are vegan believe that choosing to eat plant-based versions of these products means contributing to a larger societal shift away from the idea that animals are sort of commodities for, for human use. They're commodities to be consumed. When we eat meat and dairy products, we're participating in a system that treats animals as objects rather than as sentient beings with their own intrinsic and inherent value. And by creating plant-based versions of these products, we're challenging a system and showing that it's possible to enjoy the flavors and textures of animal-based foods without actually consuming them. This shift, if you will, in consciousness can be incredibly empowering. It's empowering for vegans, and it's a way of taking a stand against the system that vegans see as unjust and unethical. And it's not just about the animals. It's about challenging the status quo and creating a more equitable and compassionate world for all of us. And, and you know, I know not everyone sees it this way. And some people argue that, that plant-based versions of meat and dairy products are just a form of, quote, fake food, unquote, that lacks nutritional value of the real thing. But for a lot of vegans, it's not about the nutritional value. It's about the message that these products send to the rest of our community and to the world. So we're sending a message to the world that animals are not food and that we can find delicious and satisfying alternatives that don't involve exploitation and cruelty. I think it's a powerful statement and one that more and more people are starting to make and take notice of. So whether you're a longtime vegan or someone who's just starting to explore plant-based eating, remember that your food choices have the power to make great change. If you choose to eat plant-based versions of meat and dairy products, you're not just making a personal dietary choice. You're contributing to a larger movement for social and environmental justice, and that's something worth celebrating. Woohoo! It's important to remember that choosing to eat plant-based versions of meat dishes, it's not just about giving up certain foods. It's about discovering a whole new world of flavors and textures that you may never have experienced before. One of the most common misconceptions about vegan food is that it's bland or unappetizing. But the truth is, there are so many vegan options out there that are just as delicious, if not more so, than their animal-based counterparts. Whether you're craving a juicy burger or a decadent chocolate cake, there's a plant-based version out there that can satisfy that craving, and I ought to know. <laughs> and the best part, honestly 
Eating plant-based versions of these foods can actually be better for you. Now, I'm not a nutritionist, but vegan foods are often lower in saturated fats. In fact, vegan foods don't have saturated fats for the most part. And they're, they're certainly lower in cholesterol, again, because cholesterol is an animal product. And they're higher in fiber and other important nutrients. So not only are you doing your part to help the environment and, of course, the animals, you're also taking care of your own health. So... I'm going to just, here's the plug. If you're not vegan, why not give it a try? You might be surprised how easy and simple and delicious it could really be. And you might even discover a new favorite food you'd have never tried otherwise. So the reasons, in conclusion, that vegans enjoy plant-based versions of meat and desserts are varied and complex, as you can tell. But whether it's about satisfying our psychological cravings Contributing to the growth of the vegan movement or challenging societal norms, there's no denying that these foods hold a special place in the hearts and minds of many vegans. So why not join the movement and give plant-based eating a try? Your taste buds, the animals, and the planet are going to thank you for it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Because I, I love talking about this stuff. If you have questions, if you have ideas, drop me a line. I have uh, contact information in the show notes where you can find some of this stuff. And we're going to be doing a giveaway. That's right. I wanted to say this earlier. We're going to be doing a, a, a vegan dessert. If you like Kit Kat bars, especially if you like chocolate covered wafers, there is a fabulous company called Trupo Treats that they have vegan versions of a lot of your favorite candy bars. Mine favorite being the the chocolate covered wafers. They have hazelnut, they have chocolate, they have, it's just delicious. And I'm going to be doing a giveaway in the next month or so of an entire 12 pack of their candy bars. And they're going to be on the show. The founders are going to be on the show soon. So I'm super excited to have them on the show to talk about why they did what they did. Oh, and by the way, they're also gluten-free. So they're vegan, they're gluten-free, and they're delicious. You're going to love them. And uh, I'll let you know more about the giveaway as it comes closer because it's going to be when they're on the show that we're also going to be doing the giveaway. I'm super excited to have that happen. It's going to be amazing. And it's going to be a way of, of at least one, possibly two of you, depending on how many candy bars we have to give away, getting a chance to enjoy a vegan treat for the taste buds that is as good for you as it could possibly be and still be <laughs> some sort of vegan version of a candy. All righty, this is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Creative Solutions Podcast, always reminding you to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. <music>Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2023. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, keep living what you believe in.